Hey everybody, we're over here at ICT. Man, we got a beautiful Pete that's sitting right behind Tommy. Tommy, man, this truck is outstanding, man. Who does this belong to, man? Well, it actually belongs to Davis Brothers Trucking. Um, I can do one better. What's I that? Got, I got Brian Davis here. Uh, it's, it's his beautiful truck. Why don't you talk to him about it for a little bit? Sounds good. Where is the gentleman? Uh, this is Brian Davis right here. Hi, He's a great guy and built some awesome equipment. Fantastic. How you doing, Brian? Doing great. How about yourself? Fantastic. Brian, um, we, I, I have to tell you, man, this is an absolute stunning piece of equipment. All your equipment is really outstanding, but this one, man, really struck a nerve with me, and I like the concept, but I really want to get you to tell us exactly what your whole theme was when you started putting this unit together. All right, thanks. Yeah, we, we appreciate that. Uh, we kind of wanted to go back and do something a little bit more retro. Uh, you know, everybody's kind of style now, I guess, is, is, is getting to the older trucks, and we hadn't done one like that and thought, you know, we would try it out, and uh, thought the well, the whole layout of the truck was important and definitely the old style uh, ICT double legal if you will type sleeper is uh, something we thought would be important to make the truck have the look that it needed to have and uh, use the, the old uh, 359 original 359 paint scheme on it and uh, even down to the front bumper uh, was the original 16 to 12 inch with the six inch light holes and the glass yellow lens fog lights uh, we use the rectangles in the grill that match a 359 Peterbilt style grill. Um, switch the headlights over to the old double, uh, double round headlights, five and three quarters, five inch stacks, you know, and on back to the sleeper, you know. We just try to keep everything with just, just clean and neat. And, it, and you did an excellent job on it. How about we walk around it and uh, you give me a little personal tour of this piece of equipment, right? Okay. So you say you changed up the, the whole 379 hood, you wanted to go with the well, 359 concept. Yeah, kind of the 359 concept, but still still a uh, 3, 389 hood and everything. We didn't change that. We did change the grill out and uh, use the, the cutouts that was originally on a, on a 359. Original size 359 bumper with the, like I say, with the fog lights and all. We done the, the old uh, three license plate swinger, you know, the, everybody used to have the old yep. swinger plates below their bumper. And <laughs> thought that was important to do that. Took the air cleaners out with the old style uh, air cleaners with the uh, chrome cake, cake top air cleaners on them. And I see you did you did the muffler the muffler guards on your, yeah, your exhaust. Yeah, the round muffler guards. I think that that look with that five inches kind of making a comeback. You know, it's just kind of a clean and neat thing. The uh, the uh, stainless panels below the door. We put flat panels on versus on 3D9s. The hood flares out there a little bit. So about all the 3D9 panels, um, they. Uh, they have a flare out there to match up with the hood. We went ahead and went with the flat panels. I think it's a subtle but, but old look. Okay. Uh, of course, use the, the uh, glass style B have lights for, for the lighting. Very minimal lighting on this truck. So, and I, and I love that clean, slick look that you put into it. When you decided to go with the retro bump, this yes. is, this is the, the, the absolute kicker, the kicker for me. What was the whole concept on? On, on putting the, the sleeper together. Well, uh, we worked with Tommy up at ICT when I first came up with it, you know, because I, I guess the old standard was a cool was the old Double Eagle bunks, and mm -hmm. Tommy uh, at one time uh, worked for Double Eagle and, and had a, a great experience with this type of truck, so I thought it was great to work with him, and he knew, I, I kind of give him an, uh, an overview of what I wanted the truck to look like, and he took off with it. He took off with it, and uh, Actually, the process was easy. He, he gave, gave us just what we wanted, and it, it, it was, he knew just what we needed without me having to explain it. Outstanding. And I love the way you did the tanks and everything. You put the, the extended belts on there and everything. That is really, really cool. Yeah, we went with the stainless deck plate on it and the air box, uh, stainless rear fenders. We, we felt it was important to stay away from any fiberglass or anything because that wasn't what they had in the air of the truck that we were trying to represent. And I see you went with the full stainless fenders and, and the old light bars, huh? Yeah, yeah. You know, everything pretty well from that, that type of era. Uh, what, the, what's your the sign back here? Uh, the sign says yesterday's wine. I <laughs> thought maybe that was pretty fitting to the truck, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you what, Brian, this is absolutely marvelous. Now, let's take a look. Can we take a look in the inside? Yeah, it'd be great. Let's check, check it out. Okay. We got the doors open right here. 
so let's take a, let's take a stop and just look inside the sleeper here. Just explain this one to me, Brian. You kept it real simple and. and yeah, well, we, we uh, originally was going to go with the old green and cream of what would have been original back in some of the uh, 359 bumps, which would have been green. And the last minute, I decided to stick with the gray because I felt this was uh, after seeing the bunk, and I figured it was built well enough that I might be able to use it on more than one truck. And if I decided to change my color, the, the gray would be good. And so, and the driver of the truck. Uh, he preferred the gray. So we went with the gray interior, tried to keep it simple, but got his refrigerators, microwave in there, built the drawers. In fact, I sent him dimensions for our printers and things that we haul a lot of oversize that they have to carry. And Tommy worked to get the sleeper built to fit exactly what he needed. So Brian, tell me a little bit. I know everybody keeps coming up with these rumors about who Davis Brothers is, what you guys do. Are you yeah. a custom shop? Um, can you tell me exactly in your own words, what Davis Brothers is all about. Well, uh, Davis Brothers is myself, Brian, and my brother Tom, and we're out of Owensville, Indiana. And we have a trucking company. We started trucking uh, 20 plus years ago on, on our own. Uh, we farm, we're grain farmers. We grow corn, soybeans, and wheat. And uh, we always just like to keep our trucks real nice and, and uh, done a lot of custom fab on trucks and stuff over the years on our own. And more and more guys kept stopping by. Hey man, can you do that to my truck? We like that, that's cool, you know? And uh, so, and then we decided that the more we got into it, we had to have paint. So we put in a big paint booth and to do that, we had to hire some guys. And so next thing you know, we had six guys in the shop. And so yes, now <laughs> we are, I guess, an official custom truck builder. Outstanding. In designing, I got one question. Yes, sir. You got a, a strobe on the top. Yes. What, why do you have the strobe up there? Well, the, this truck hauls a lot of farm equipment. We haul a lot of oversize. This truck will probably be uh, running over with 80% of the miles that this truck's going to run. Oh, okay. Okay. So, uh, and by the color, you can tell what type of farm equipment that we haul, I'm sure. And yeah, John that's Deere. important to us. <laughs> John Deere, huh? Yeah. And again, thank you for the interest in it, and uh, we appreciate it. And the truck oh, yeah. has shown well at the show, and a lot of great compliments, and we're very thankful for them. So thanks for having interest. Would you? I, I see you've got all your lettering and everything. That's not graphic, man. That's hand-painted hand stuff, right? Yes, all the, all the lettering was hand-painted by a gentleman named Darren Bean out of Maceo, Kentucky. He letters all of our trucks for us and does an incredible job. In fact, that lettering there on the side of that bunk took him about 15 minutes, I think, and uh, pretty well off freehand. And we, but we thought it's very important to have hand-painted lettering because this truck was supposed to be representative of what it was before we had the vinyl lettering. So we thought it was very important to have it all hand-painted. Let's go back and look at the front of it one more time, Brian, if you don't mind. Thing is just put together really, really nice. So. And I wish we could get a chance to I look at that, how you got that, that, that old school bumper on there and everything. But when you, when you did this, what, what really just, just keyed it for you when it came down to saying, you know what, guys, this is what we want to do? Well, you know, I, I don't know. I can't pin it down to one thing. Um, I grew up, uh, my dad drove 359 Peterbilts and Actually, as a kid growing up, that was what the majority of what I rode in, you know, and I basically just, I went back and, and tried to put the things on there that I remember as a kid, and several of the trucks he drove had Schwann's on the hood, and I always just thought that was cool, and that was something that a lot of truckers done, you know, and a lot of trucks have done. So I thought the color was very important. Uh -huh. I thought the color was very important. I wanted to go with some sorts of browns or some sorts of greens. I thought that it, you know, it should be a representative color of, of the oldest trucks that I remembered as a kid. And uh, so I went with the greens and the other two colors, we, we went back and forth over what the stripe colors were gonna be for quite some time. And this is where we ended up, so we hope we hit it. Well, I tell you what, Brian, we're gonna take a step on the other side, because the other door is open on the other side, guys. I want you all to look on the inside of this sleeper um, from a different perspective, so hold on tight. So Brian, yeah. if you would, let's walk down and take a look right. at This is outstanding. Now, I understand you have a driver for this unit. So yes. did you have him in mind when you put this whole package together? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, Shane Johnson's our driver. And he's, he's been a good, great driver. Worked for us for a long time. And, and uh, he likes the whole old school theme. And that's why we thought it'd be a perfect truck for him. And, uh, you know, we kind of laid the bunk out kind of the way he wanted it a bit. And, uh, with the microwave, the refrigerator. 
this uh, ICT offers this, uh, I think they call it a gaucho, I can't remember the exact terminology, but basically a bed that lays, flips down. He can flip it up, flip this table down, got some nice cushions here, roll the TV out and he can sit and have, have dinner and uh, watch TV without having to lay in his bunk, you know. Guys get their sleepers and they don't always want to be laying down, you know, and this, this sleeper definitely gives you the option for that. So I think that's going to be something that uh, he's going to really enjoy being able to sit at the table and watch TV or eat, eat dinner or those type of things. And I noticed this, I know this is a, one of your work trucks, yep. but man, this is so immaculate. The way you put this together, it just looks like, and I know you're probably going to catch it with guys saying, oh no, that truck doesn't do any work, but you actually built this for service. So when it leaves here, she goes to work. Absolutely. Yeah, He, in fact, he would have just soon we not brought it to the show and just went straight to work. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, ICT asked us to come over and represent them, and uh, they done a great job for us. And so we felt, you know, that it would be great. Of course, it was a great opportunity to get the truck in the, in the uh, Louisville Truck Show. You know, who, who doesn't like that, Who doesn't right? like that, right? You know, so, yeah, we were, we were thankful, glad to get the truck over. And, but, yes, def definitely going to be a work truck. Uh, he runs a lot out of Kentucky, between the uh, Kentucky to Iowa lane. So if you run that, uh, truckers, and you're out there, I'm sure you'll be seeing him very soon. <laughs> Outstanding. On that note, everybody, I want to thank Brian once again from Davis Brothers that this is an excellent opportunity for you guys to come over, see one of his trucks in person. The man does excellent work, as you can see. Come over, check him out. And if you, you might be around, you might even get an autograph from him. Oh, no. boy. I don't know. <laughs> All yeah. right. Everybody, we'll see you guys later. we got a lot of crowd out here that's getting ready to look at this truck. So we'll catch you guys next time. It's Elegance on 18 Wheels. We'll talk to you later. Thanks, Brian. Hey, thank you, man. Great.